the song. I was born on a beach street with a wrecking needle in my arm, pumping juice and 12 inch servings way before Puck ever watered her Kool Aid down to the punch. Of course, I was born and raised in Queens, um, city kid, um, latchkey kid. Um, my parents split when I was little, but um, my dad was always there, so I'm very grateful for that. Um, I will say that there were times that I know my mother couldn't do um, everything she wanted to do, but she was very careful about um, not making me feel like I wanted for her stuff. My mother taught me to read and write before mm -hmm. I started school. Mm -hmm. So I wrote my first book when I was five. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people like a lot of writers, mm -hmm. you know. I guess I guess that's the that's like the prerequisite when you know you're gonna be a writer is right. like when you were four you wrote your first poem or something like right. that. And I would I just liked communicating I think to I like words a lot. Um, my dad was very much a, a verbal jouster, mm. like he was, I think he introduced me to wordplay mm. because he was very big on puns and jokes and riddles and things like that mm. and um, <clears throat> so I think that just developed into the way I spoke. Mm -hmm. So when I wrote, I wrote the same way. Mm. So, um, my mother was the one who said that I should be a writer, and um, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> it didn't occur to me that like writing was was a profession. Oh, so I know that you have um, an album out right now, Love Charlotte, <laughs> and um, I was listening to it recently, and I know that there's a, a track on it called Ivy. Yes. And. Um, I know it deals with uh, a woman or a young girl who's kind of like ostracized mm -hmm. by the folks in the neighborhood. Could you tell me a little bit about the source of inspiration for that? Um, so, on my block in Queens, in St. Albans, which was, you know, pretty much working class, you know, um, there was a young girl who lived about two houses down from me. And... How old was she? She was... Well, let's see. I moved there, I was nine. So she must have been about 11, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, her mother, both her parents were actually drug addicted. Mm -hmm. um, and her, grand, her grandmother, which was her maternal grandmother that she lived with, along with her mom and her aunt, and her, it was just like, it was... It was just like madness in her house, mm -hmm. and um, the most of the adults in my block were very holier than thou, mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. holier than thou, and um, very judgmental. Mm -hmm. They didn't hold their tongues even, you know. They were very insensitive mm -hmm. toward people. And um, so what did you ever like notice her like getting into like trouble or? Well, she was always. You know, she wanted very much to be friends with everybody, and she was pretty much friends with us, mm -hmm. you know, the rest of the kids on the block, mm -hmm. but, you know, because of her situation, who her parents were, how they were, um, they were, there were things that would happen in her life mm -hmm. that would just make her very outcast, like, like um, hygiene even, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the rest of the kids, you know how kids are. Kids can be cruel. Right. And they would say things like she smelled or whatever. Right, because she didn't have anyone, like a role right. model to Taking show her, care how, of her. To, how to be a girl. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, there was a lot of promiscuity in her house. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, looking back, I'm realizing, wow, she was probably, it may have been like, you know, a brothel going on in there for all I know. It was just, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of promiscuity. Mm -hmm. um, and so she kind of fell into that. Mm -hmm. um, by the time we were like 13 or mm -hmm. 14, she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, the 
the tongues wagged and the head shook and you know it was like don't play with her she's XYZ um, I just knew she was different she was different from the rest of us um, I knew that she was not as cautious so to speak she was a risk taker mm -hmm. um, but looking back I know that she had nothing to lose mm -hmm. um, any you know how they say any place is better she used to run away a lot mm -hmm. now I think about it she um, she would say she was gonna run away she actually attempted suicide I think twice and what what ended up happening to her like overall because I know in the in the poem she kind of ended up not such a good in such um, a good place well she actually had her baby mm -hmm. um, eventually she left I don't know where she went mm -hmm. I remember seeing her once I was like on a bus because my family ended up moving we moved mm -hmm. out to the Rockaways mm -hmm. and um, I saw her with the kid um, going um, into a, a clinic and um, I wanted to like get off the bus and be like, hey, how are you? But, you know, I was on my way to school, so um, I couldn't get off the bus. But, like, I haven't forgotten, like, that image of just seeing her, mm -hmm. like, by herself with this kid. Right. Um, and what, what made you want to write the poem about her? What, what drew you to that? I think part of it is because I never lost that image of just, like, seeing her. Because in my head, I'm like, what's going to happen to you? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it was just this this concern of, like, I guess, like, some personalities just never leave you. Some mm -hmm. images just never go away. Mm -hmm. And as you get older, you, you begin to wonder, like, you know, or things come clearer to you, and you you start to reevaluate um, what you think you knew. Mm -hmm.